Welcome back to TheWindowDog.com. Today we're coming to you from this beautiful old house just outside of the French Quarter in New Orleans. Now it's a wonderful day here today, but it is a little chilly. In fact, I think it's the coldest day so far this year. That makes it the perfect day to talk about condensation that might form on your windows when it first starts to get cold outside. You see, we've been at this for many years, and every year when it first starts to get cold, we'll get inquiries from folks all over the country with condensation on their windows. Now sometimes these are people with new windows, sometimes they're people with old windows, windows, but when it first starts to get cold is when everybody starts to get worried about condensation. So what we're going to do is look at what's going on here. We're going to look at how you can reduce or eliminate the chances of condensation forming on your windows, and we'll look at what factors you should consider when ordering new windows to try to prevent condensation from forming. So to start off, I think it's helpful to understand what causes condensation to form on your windows. Basically, all the air has moisture in it, and warm air can hold more moisture than cold air. So as warm, moist air cools down, at some point it reaches a temperature where it can no longer hold as much moisture as it has in it. That that moisture then condenses, turns from a gas into a liquid, and forms water droplets onto whatever the coldest surface is around. Generally speaking, if you look at a wall, the coldest surface is going to be the perimeter of an insulated glass unit, or even, I suppose, a non-insulated glass unit. The perimeter of the glass is going to be the coldest spot, and that's where you'll generally see the condensation start to form. Here we can look at an infrared camera view of my house. You can see here the coldest section of this wall is the perimeter of these insulated glass units. That's just how it works. So if you're trying to prevent condensation from forming, you've got two real choices. You can either increase the temperature of that glass, or you can decrease the amount of humidity in the air, which would reduce the dew point. As long as you can keep the temperature above the dew point, you've prevented condensation. Here's a great example of that. I remember years ago, we had a customer in the Midwest who called, who had gotten windows replaced by us, and they called a year or two years later saying they were having this huge condensation problem. They thought there was some defect in the windows. Well, we sent a rep out there to take a look at it, and what they discovered made perfect sense. The windows in question were two windows that were right side by side in a guest bedroom that this couple rarely used. They kept the door to that bedroom closed, and they had the heater vent closed off in that room as well. And then in front of the window, they had big heavy curtains that were like floor to ceiling type covered the whole window. So one day, after months of not using this room, they went in there, opened that window, saw all this condensation on the window, and thought something was wrong. Really what was going on was because that room was so sealed off from the rest of the house, the air temperature was very low. That air temperature was below the dew point, or the humidity level, in that room, which is what was causing the condensation to form. So as an experiment, we suggested, why don't we leave the door open to that room for a couple days, we'll leave the curtains cracked open, four inches, six inches, something like that, and we'll leave the heater vent open so that warm air is allowed to get into this room, and we'll see what happens with the condensation. Well, lo and behold, the condensation completely went away. So there was nothing wrong with the windows, it was just that the air in that room, specifically the air right next to those windows, had fallen below the dew point, which is why the condensation was forming on the glass. In fact, the same thing happens at my house. We have two big windows that look out the back of the house and face towards the woods. It's beautiful, it's a wonderful view, and we have these honeycomb shades over those windows. We pretty much never close those shades, except when we go out of town, for some reason we think it's a good idea to close close all the shades in the house. So we'll close those shades, and then when we come back from being out of town, there's moisture on the bottom of that glass if it's cold outside. What's happening is those honeycomb shades are trapping air between the shades and the windows. That air in between there isn't able to circulate with the rest of the air in the house, so it cools off, and it cools off, and it cools off. And now, over time, it cools below the dew point, which is when you see condensation form. So the easy solution is just to leave those blinds up a couple of inches. That allows that air to circulate, and then there's no condensation at all. Very easy solution. So if you're seeing condensation on your windows, the very first and foremost thing I would try is to allow warm air from the rest of the house or the rest of the room to get near those windows. Open the blinds a little bit, make sure the door to that room is open, make sure the air is able to circulate, and you're probably going to solve your problem. Now if that doesn't solve the problem, the next thing to look at is ways to bring down the relative humidity level in the room. Because what's happening is the humidity level is too high for the temperature and it's causing the condensation. So, one thing you could do would be to run a dehumidifier. That would help to pull some moisture out of the air, lower the humidity levels, which would then lower the chances of condensation forming on that glass. There's other ways, too. You could look at opening the window, let a little fresh air in the room once a day or, or every so often. You allow that stale, sort of moist air from breathing and cooking and showering and everything to escape the house and allow some fresh air in, and that'll likely solve your problem. 
If you have a bunch of house plants all over the house, that could contribute to the humidity level in the air and the condensation as well. You might put all the plants, or as many as you can, kind of in one area, one part of the house. Avoid overwatering them so you're not putting more and more moisture into the air. That could do the trick. Or you could talk to your HVAC company about uh, fresh air ventilation, especially if you have a propane or gas-fired furnace. That oftentimes can generate a lot of moisture, put a lot of moisture in the air, which will then raise the humidity level, which will allow that dew point to creep up up to the temperature level of the air right by that glass, again causing condensation on the glass. As an example, we see this in our RV a lot. We've got this little RV, we go tooling around. If we go somewhere cold and we're running that propane furnace all night, in the morning there will be condensation all over the place because that furnace puts out a, puts a lot of moisture into the air and then it condenses all over the, uh, the windows. One interesting thing to note is that we're more likely to get calls from people with condensation problems in the south than we are in the north. That might not be expected because you might think this is a cold weather thing. We have family in Alaska, you can go up there and you'll never see condensation on the windows in Alaska. The reason why is the HVAC systems in those climates are designed for that situation. They're designed to ventilate the house, they allow fresh air in, they bring that moist air out, prevents condensation from building up in the house. In the South, you oftentimes don't see that. For example, I recently had a customer in San Antonio, Texas, who was furious with his condensation problem he was having with his old windows, and he was gonna get new windows from us to try to prevent this problem. In talking through it with him, we did end up getting him new windows, and it did help his problem, but the pictures he sent of the condensation were kind of insane. There was moisture everywhere. And I told him, the windows will definitely help. What they'll do is raise that air temperature right near the window. It will make, the new windows will be more efficient than the old windows. It will reduce the chance of condensation. But looking at the amount of condensation he had on his old windows, my suggestion was to call his HVAC company. He needed a more fresh air ventilation under his gas furnace that would allow more air, more fresh air in and take more of that humid air out. He did both of those things. He got new windows and he had an HVAC company work on his system and his condensation problem was solved. There was no more condensation on the windows because the dew point in the house had fallen and the efficiency of the windows had risen to the point that the, the air temperature was warmer than the dew point no issue at all. If this all sounds a little bit theoretical, let's look at this chart that might help explain what sort of conditions you would want to achieve in order to avoid having condensation on your windows. As you can see here, this handy little chart that's put out by a window manufacturer that my company deals with will show you if it's zero degrees outside, you would wanna have a relative humidity level inside of 25% or less. If you had more than 25% relative humidity while it's zero degrees outside, you do have a chance that condensation will form on that glass. Now, the more efficient your windows are, the higher the humidity level can be in the house before condensation will form, and the colder it is outside, the lower that humidity level needs to be in order to prevent condensation. Do you see how that works? As the temperature goes down, the humidity level also needs to go down, or a more efficient window will keep the temperature of that glass higher, which would allow you to have a little bit more humidity in the air without causing you a condensation problem. So you see on the same chart, if the outside air temperature were 20 degrees, you'd be okay with the humidity levels of 35 to 40%. Higher humidity levels than that would introduce the possibility of seeing condensation form on the windows, and lower humidity levels would completely eliminate that problem because there's not enough moisture in the air. The dew point would be low enough such that the temperature won't reach the dew point condensation won't form. If you feel like you've done about as much as you can to both increase the temperature around the windows and decrease the humidity levels, but you're still not seeing the results you want, there's a couple of other things you can look at. One, you wanna make sure that all your proper, all your normal sorts of uh, ventilation are working. Your attic vents are clear and unobstructed. The house is able to breathe as it should. You also might wanna just open up a window every once in a while, allow some, uh, some of the dry, cold outside air to come in and get some of that warm, moist air out, and just to help keep the humidity level where they're supposed to be. It's gonna eliminate your problem pretty easily. In fact, in this old house here in New Orleans, we don't see any condensation on the windows. And these windows are probably 100 years old from the look of them. Now, why don't you see condensation? Well, because they're drafty. It is chilly in here, even with the furnace cranked up to 72. And that's because these old windows just don't seal very well. That means they're letting a lot of, of this moist air that's in here out they're letting cold, dry air in even when they're shut. And that's exactly what people don't expect sometimes about buying new windows. It's not 
entirely uncommon that somebody gets new windows, say they get them over the summer, and then as soon as it gets cold outside, they flip the heater on, they see condensation on the windows, and they call us up and they say, these windows are causing condensation in my house. Well, that's absolutely not true. Windows don't cause condensation. But what might be happening is that the air, your, your old drafty windows were letting some of that humid air out last winter. This winter, those old drafty windows are gone. The new windows are sealed up very tight. They're not, in, they're not allowing any of that humidity to get out. They're keeping that humidity the in, which is raising the dew point of your air, which is what's causing condensation to form. As an example of that, many years ago, I dealt with a customer south of Richmond, Virginia. Now, she did not buy windows from us. She bought windows from another company in town. I happen to know the owner of that company, and they're a very reputable outfit. But she called up our office thinking she was going to have to get new windows all over again after she, after she just bought windows last year. She was not happy about it, and she wanted us to guarantee that the new windows we would install would not cause condensation in our house. Well, that can be a tricky thing to guarantee because as we've already discussed, there's a lot of environmental factors that go into whether or not condensation forms a lot more than just the efficiency level of the window. So she was pretty irritated and she was telling us that this other company wasn't able to help her and they were a bunch of jerks and I know them and I think they're probably not a bunch of jerks. So I had a little free time and I offered to just cruise over to her house and take a look at it. So I met her a day or two later and as soon as I walked into the house, it was pretty obvious what was going on. You could see she had electric baseboard heaters around the perimeter of almost the entire house. There was no forced air, there was no vents, there's no moving air in this house, period. So when the house is all sealed up, because it was cold outside, the house is all sealed up, these electric baseboard heaters are running, everybody, I think there were her and her husband and two or three kids living there, all these people are eating and drinking and breathing all day long and showering and cooking food and, and putting a lot of moisture in the air. Well, it's freezing cold outside, so everything's shut, and there was a lot of condensation on her windows. So she's telling me how, you know, this is so horrible and I can't believe it and look at these look at these garbage windows this other company installed. I understand she felt that way, but that's not really what was going on. So I asked her if the old windows, before she got these new windows, if the old windows were drafty. And of course she said yes, right? She said, oh yeah, they were horrible. They were really drafty. In fact, the new windows don't feel that bad. They feel nicer than the, than the old windows did, but this condensation is driving me crazy. I wish I had never bought them. They're so bad. So I tried to explain to her that that's exactly what's going on. The old windows were drafty enough that they were letting the house breathe. They were letting a lot of this moisture get out. The new windows were, were sealing tighter. They were letting less moisture out, which means the humidity level in the house was rising to the point where the dew point was was meeting the temperature and condensation was forming. So the solution for her was just to crack a window once in a while or run a dehumidifier to solve your problem. She could also contact an HVAC company. They could probably install something a little more permanent for her if that's what she wanted, but without a forced air system, that can become a whole rigmarole and I'm not a HVAC expert, so you wanna talk to somebody else about that. But basically what was going on in her house was that the humidity level was rising and rising and rising. Imagine if all those people stayed in that house for three or four days without ever going outside. Well, there are all those people taking showers, all those people cooking dinner, all those people breathing all day long. What's happening? The moisture level is going up and up and up and up to the point where the dew point meets the temperature, condensation forms in the window. So it's not a problem with the window. There was nothing wrong with the work this other company did. It was just an environmental situation in our house and the really easy solution was just to crack a window. So if you're experiencing condensation in your house, those are the factors to look at. You either need to increase the temperature around the window, maybe it's as simple as just opening the blinds or opening the door to that room or letting the air circulate a little bit more, or you need to decrease the humidity levels. Now that's as simple as just opening a window and letting the house breathe a little bit, or maybe running a dehumidifier, or even running your bathroom fan longer than you need to, to just draw more and more of that moisture out of the house. Sometimes it doesn't take much. It might just be a little difference just to get that temperature uh, just a little bit above the dew point and you won't have any issue anymore. The new windows will hopefully help because they will increase the temperature of the air right around that glass because the new windows will be more efficient than the old windows. As an example, let's take a look at a couple of options my company commonly offers. Now these are options we offer in the southern climate zone. We would offer different options in different parts of the country, but just as an example, we'll look at this chart. You can see the Energy Star package, and this package is the least expensive option we'd offer in this area that also meets the Energy Star criteria for this area. The Energy Star package here has a condensation resistance resistance rating of 56. Now the easiest way to understand whether that's good or bad is to look at it in reference to other options. So we can look at the next option down here, which is the same window, 
the same glass, the same gas fill, the same low E coatings. The only difference is the spacer that goes around the perimeter of the glass. Here we're replacing a metallic spacer with a non-metallic super spacer, they call it. And that's the only difference. And you see the condensation resistance rating goes from 56 to 59. Higher is better, so that means it's war the glass will be warmer and less likely to form condensation. So that's good. And you can see down here, just to skip ahead, we can look at this triple pane package. Now triple pane glass is obviously more efficient than double pane glass, so you would expect the condensation resistance rating to rise, right? That must make sense. The air temperature inside the house would be a little bit warmer right next to that glass because the glass is more efficient. And you see that in the numbers. The condensation resistance rating changes from 59 to 69. Quite a big percentage difference. It's all very intuitive, it sort of makes sense, and it, the numbers bear it out. So when you're shopping for new windows, if condensation is an issue for you, you want to look for windows with the highest possible condensation resistance rating. What that means is the glass will stay as warm as it can when the house is all sealed up. So the windows can help, but they won't prevent all condensation. The house needs to be properly ventilated. It needs to be allowing outside air to come in and inside air to get out in order to prevent that sort of moisture from showing up. So if you have a replacement window project in mind, I would suggest checking out our website at thewindowdog.com. You will find it is the greatest source of replacement window information on the entire internet. If you'd like a free and easy and generally completely online quote for your project, you can get one from my company, Window Universe. As of today, we're offering windows in 33 states and the District of Columbia, and that list is growing every day. You can find the links down below in the description to Window Universe, where you'll be able to get all that information. In fact, if we don't offer windows in your area, we may know another great company to recommend, so I think you'll find that to be pretty helpful. You can check out the links down below. Now, we do have some new videos coming up that I think will also be pretty cool. We're going to do one all about foam in the windows, foam around the windows, foam inside the windows. There's foam everywhere when it comes to windows, and we're going to help explain what it does and does not do for you. We're also going to do some new window warranty reviews, a lot of really cool stuff coming up. So hit the old subscribe button down below there somewhere, and you'll be able to uh, be informed when we have new videos come out, and that way you will not miss out. So we hope this video helped as you're trying to navigate your condensation issue, and we will see you guys next time.